Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Kenna. Yay! This is a series in which we both sit down with a cup of coffee and you listen to me talk about the thing. So without further ado, I picked some topics from my Instagram that you guys recommended and I'm just gonna, you know, talk about them. The first topic in question today is do I have an Asian fetish? We are probably all no stranger to the silly little rumor that's going around saying that I have an Asian fetish. So let's just go ahead and dive right into that. Let's analyze this conspiracy theory. Let's start by talking about what exactly is fetishization. Fetishization is defined as the sexual fascination with things that aren't inherently sexual. Fetishization and anything to do with a fetish is quite literally directly corresponded with sexual desires and interests. As an aromantic asexual person, I literally cannot feel sexual attraction. And no, it's not a choice. No, it's not like a, I don't really like sex, so I'm just gonna stay away from it kind of a thing. Um, no. I cannot, can't, have not, and will not ever be able to feel sexual attraction. Therefore, I literally cannot have a fetish, you know? Like, fetish is a sexual desire, I can't feel sexual desire, you get, you get what I'm, you get what I'm saying, right? So no, I do not have an Asian fetish. I think people who use the Asian fetishization thing as a way of describing somebody who's obsessed with Asians maybe, but the correct term for that would actually be a weeaboo. So then, am I a weeaboo? The answer to that is also no. No, I am not. So then why might somebody think that I am obsessed with Japan, Japanese culture, wanting to be an Asian person or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and blame that probably on my humor. I feel like it always comes back to that. Always comes back to bite me in the butt. I have a very, very 99.9% .9 sarcastic sense of humor. So um, all of my jokes are usually sarcasm, which is fine and dandy, but you know, in real life and especially online, people usually don't, they don't really pick it up very well. I would say you kind of have to be a sarcastic person to understand someone's sarcastic humor. It is, you know, it is what it is. I have made plenty of jokes in the past surrounding Japan and me being obsessed with it. One of the most notable ones, the ones that people love to throw back at me, is a joke that I made when somebody commented on my account while I was in Japan saying something along the lines of like, wow, Japanese people are the most beautiful people nobody can compare. And I just played right along and I said, yeah, every Japanese person is a supermodel and Americans compared to them are ugly as fuck. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think it was pretty obvious that I was joking. Let's break down why. All Japanese people are supermodels. Clearly they aren't. We all know that's um, not true. So if we all know that's not true, then I was probably exaggerating in a humorous way. Next, let's look at the next part. Compared to them, American people are ugly as fuck. We pretty much all know that I myself am an American person. My family, my friends, they are all American. So, um, probably obviously, I don't think American people are ugly as fuck. I think if you see a comment and you can't really tell if it's joking or if it's serious, um, maybe just ask them. Maybe just ask them if they were, if that was serious, if it was a, a joke. I feel like sarcasm is very obvious, especially when it's exaggerated sarcasm. When you're saying something as extreme as all Japanese people are supermodels. We all know that's not true. So like, isn't it obviously a joke? Isn't it obvious? Am I crazy? Another one of those jokes, a similar joke that I made, um, was something along the lines of reason number 5767 why Japan is superior to America. 
Again, I feel like that is obviously a, a joke because I, I obviously didn't actually name 5,767 reasons why I think that Japan is superior. First of all, I don't think anyone is superior to anyone. I think everyone is equal. All the countries, all the peeps, all the animals, everything. Equal, good. But like, please, somebody back me up. Is it not obvious? Maybe I'm crazy, you know? Maybe, I'll give it that. I will say, maybe I'm crazy and I just think things are obvious and they're not. Maybe everyone thought that I was being serious, but I really just don't, I don't see how you could think that. So yeah, my humor was pretty much taken completely out of context, taken um, seriously, and that is how the, the whole um, I think Asian people are superior thing came to be. Another way people think that I might be a weeaboo is um, some people think that I want to be Asian or like try to look Asian. Um, again, no. I enjoy trying out lots of different trends and styles. I think that's pretty obvious if you just, you know, look at all of my YouTube channel and all of my photos and stuff. I really like trying out different trends and different styles. Some of those I happen to pick up from Japan, but that doesn't mean that I want to be Asian. And that doesn't mean that I'm really trying to trick people into thinking that I am Asian. I've also worn lots of French styles, berets and whatnot, but that doesn't mean that I want to be French. I've also worn lots of 60s and 70s styles, but that doesn't mean that I wish I was born in that era. I don't know, just food for thought. So I hate to disappoint you guys, but unfortunately, no, um, I, I don't have an Asian fetish and um, I'm not a weeaboo. I just enjoy Japan and certain aspects of Japanese culture, just like I do with lots of other things. So, you know, cheers, cheers to that. I thought that was just a, an interesting little topic to talk about because we've all heard the rumors and we all know they're going around, but I don't think that I ever really kind of broke it down and given my, my input on it. So now I have, it's a struggle, all my fellow dry, blunt, and sarcastic, humored friends out there. Goodbye. You get me. And moving on to the next topic, which also has to do, still, with Japan, because I get a lot of questions about Japan, somehow. As we know, I've gone on two trips to Japan, and so I've had a lot of people ask me, do I plan on staying there longer or moving there? And the answer is yes, I do. My first trip to Japan that I went on, I only stayed for nine days. And then my second trip to Japan that I went on, I stayed for a month. And both times, I absolutely loved it so freaking much. And I do want to, and I did want to then, stay longer. And so I decided that, you know, while I'm young and, and hip and poppin', I might as well like go and live there for a longer amount of time. So it is something that I thought about and actually is something that I'm kind of really looking into currently because my lease on the apartment that I'm in is going to be ending this year and I don't really have a plan for where to go next because I don't want to renew the lease here. I don't want to stay in these apartments and it's kind of too soon to buy a house. So I feel like this is kind of the perfect time. Like, I don't know where I'm going and I do want to at some point go live in Japan for a certain amount of time and just experience that. So I feel like, I feel like this is the right time to do that. So it's, it's something that, that I've been looking into. I've been looking into like um, schools because if I move to Japan, I want to go to a language school and I want to like properly, can't even speak my own language. I want to properly learn Japanese if I'm gonna live in Japan, obviously, you know? Learning Japanese on your own is fine, but it's a little difficult, and I would rather just like go to a school I think would be a really cool experience because I never went to college or anything like that, and I'm one of those people who I only like to learn things that interest me, which is why I struggled in school so much, but that's a, you know, that's a different, that's a different subject. But I think that if I went to a Japanese language school, which is literally only focused 
on learning Japanese, I feel like I would probably enjoy it and do good because it's just the one subject that I want to learn. So I'm more passionate about it, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm looking into Japanese language schools and moving out there, but I have to look at all the prices and locations and how hard it would be to find an apartment and everything like that, and it's a lot. But I'm definitely looking into it right now, so. So that's that, and moving on to the next topic is starting an autumn theme in June. I've had a lot of people kind of um, want me to talk about uh, my obsession with autumn and why I have started an autumn theme so dang early. As we all know, we all freaking know, I'm obsessed with autumn. It's my favorite season. I love it. I, I mean, I can't put it into words really. I love it. Usually, I mean, I always pretty much start an autumn theme kind of early. I think last year I started it in August and I declared that August was pre-autumn, which I still stand by. See, the thing is that I don't much care for summer. Like, summer's fine, I guess, but I I don't really like it very much. Not just, like, the weather and stuff, but I mean, kind of all of it. Like, I don't really care for the holidays in summer, and I don't really care for, like, summer style. I don't really care for the beach that much. The colors associated with summer, just kind of like the whole package. Like, summer just... It's not so much my thing. It was my thing when I was little. I really, really loved summer when I was little and 4th of July was actually my favorite holiday when I was little. So summer rolled around and I was already over it before it even started. And I was like, I just want it to be fall so I can wear my favorite colors and decorate with my favorite decor pieces and stuff like that. And then I was just like, wait, why don't I do that though? For some reason in my head, I was like, during summer, I have to wear summer colors. Like, I have to wear kind of bright, happy pastel colors and pink. And then during fall, I can wear all my neutral colors and stuff. I don't know why my brain kind of clicked like that, but that's what it did. And then I decided that, you know what? Um, time is an illusion. And you can wear whatever the fuck you want, whenever the fuck you want. So yeah, um, I pretty much just decided that who cares? And if I want to wear autumn colors, neutral colors, during the summer and decorate with like leaves and pretty oranges and browns and stuff like that, then you know, I'm gonna do it. It seems to really bother some people, which is funny, um, but you know, to each their own. Goodbye. Time is an illusion, so. There you go. I was actually thinking about doing a video on how to keep an Instagram theme because I mean, I've gotten a lot of questions about that, like how the heck do you keep a theme going? And so I was thinking about it and I was like, maybe I should try and do a video on it. So let me know if you'd be interested in a video on how to keep an Instagram theme. I don't know if I'll be really that helpful because honestly, it kind of is just second nature to me, but I did think about like how you can actually follow a process or something like that. So I don't know. If you want that video, let me know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I talked about all the topics that I wanted to cover. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and your coffee. And with that, I'm wrapping it up. So till next time, stay sweet. Bye. I actually got through a Coffee with Kenna video like properly talking about everything that I wanted to talk about with no confusion and rambling and I'm very proud of myself. I usually get too frustrated because I start rambling about things and then I'm like, did that make sense? Then I delete the video. So I think we did good this time. Cheers. Okay, bye.